What is up my people? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your boy Nassim the Dream. If you're new to the channel, just go right on ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell as well to always keep notified on my newest content. Today we got a special album review. Today I'm going to be doing my segment called The OG List. This is a segment where I like to talk about an album that is a classic album to me and the record I chose to review in honor of its 10 year anniversary is given to the 1975 self-titled years ladies and gentlemen it's been 10 years since the viral sensation the 1975 debuted their first major successful commercial record the pinnacle of every loner teenager's highlight most likely comes from this record so it's not exactly like it was uncommon to hear indie pop and rock blends at the time that really embodied some type of loner rebellious attitude but never had we had such a beautiful blend and craft from the 1975 especially with a heavy high talent such as Maddie Healy. The look and persona of the band is what had many gravitate towards the image of the 1975, thus leading to a new beginning, a new obsession for another boy band. But I think it is important to know that this is not exactly the beginning of the 1975. It actually reverts back all the way to 2002, beginning with the formation back at the home of Wimslow Chenzire, England, with Matt and bassist Ross McDonald, later on recruiting guitarist Adam Hahn. A lot of people don't really realize that Matt Maddie initially started as a drummer for the band. He wasn't always the front man for the 1975. He later took over after their original front man just dipped and then later on recruiting George Daniel, which Maddie says was the biggest change of his entire life. After eight years of sticking around through thick and thin, even following around Maddie while he was going to school for music, playing around any gig that they could get, 2010 became the big year that they got their first major record deal with independent label Dirty Hit Records. The band started experimenting and Working with producer Mike Crossy, who has worked with such names such as Arctic Monkeys and Foles. They've had many processes of cycling through band names, establishing aesthetics, graphic design logos. The process soon hatched in into this final product. The band started to begin to release several EPs prior to the final finish for their debut self titled Off the surface, it can be easily assumed that the band may delve into influences of punk music, possibly even emo music, but really inside is this delicate, fun, infectious, familiar, yet unique indie rock pop blend. They still really do a really good job of layering this dark, hazy filter on top with this enthralling, catchy pop tune. The band just caught so many by storm as just how well they really had this dark hazy filter over this very catchy and familiar pop tune. My first discovery came from social media after seeing a bunch of horny ass chicks about Maddie and just you know just drooling over the guy and I had to see what was up. After checking the music video for the track Robbers what do you know I became horny as well. I could just not get over how fresh and delicious this song felt off of First Living. Productively it was certainly one of the most prestigious pieces I have ever heard in that year. Not to mention that is what makes the band so profound and prolific in today's day and age as they came to produce countless songs and records for people that became successful along the way like Pale Waves and No Rome. Essentially they took the world by storm debuting at the number one of UK Billboard's charts and including being declared as indie pop's best album of 2013. Every time I hear the rising swirl synthesizers in this intro for Robbers I get Goosebumps. Even today, this is by far one of the most delicate, passionate, and unforgettable performances from the band. I don't think anyone can resist singing out loud in the car to Maddie on the outro. It's an absolute treasure. You look so cool. I was quickly pulled into this song, not just because of its sonic joy, but its harrowing story of a toxic relationship. The video shapes this scenario of a couple preparing to rob a store, but beneath the surface, it's mostly inspired from Quentin Tarantino's movie True Romance that gave this whole Bonnie and Clyde kind of tale. Because it's not about what they're about to do, it's about how much they've done to each other and how much they just robbed each other of happiness. The blinding effect of their obsession with each other has evidently led to their demise. I couldn't exactly put in words at the time about how I felt about the song, I just knew I loved it. That was it. And after this, I'm like, hey, I gotta check out some more from the band. I'm hearing Chocolate, I'm hearing the track Girls, and just saying, all right, I gotta fucking play the record because these songs 
fucking bang. I can confidently tell you that this was an LP that completely shaped my taste of indie rock and pop while also simultaneously becoming my favorite band at the time. At this point, we can dive into the entire concept and theme of the record that it revolves around, and that is love. Whether it's a love letter from the track The City, the euphoric sensation from the track Chocolate, which by the way, is arguably the band's most well-known track, especially because it was the first track debuted on the radio. Or even about crushing on the girl next door from the track Heart Out, this album is the ultimate ensemble of love in so many scenarios. But of course, what really won our hearts, what really had us begging for more from the band, is the sonic effect of the record. The band does so well of blending in rock and pop fuses while still painting in a black and white filter, but underneath upholds just so much color. The arrangement in my opinion is well strategized enough. I'm not gonna say that it is absolutely perfect, but I think when it comes to hitting banger to banger to banger, it keeps you locked in and you hardly even realize that 50 minutes have even went by. The 1975 have this tradition of beginning a record with the intro that is always titled the 1975, which is essentially a walk into the experience for the record by setting the tone in some manner that matches the essence of whichever record you play from the band. You've seen this from I Like It When You Sleep, where you're so beautiful yet so unaware of it, a brief inquiry and notes in conditional form, and even on the new record being funny in a foreign language. At the time, it didn't really seem that special, but just because of how far the band went on and where they're at in their career, seeing all the different ways they began a record, there must be acknowledgement to how special this moment is because this is where it all started. With the band really kicking off with the first track really displayed off their early LPs, The City brings a great feel of indie rock to the listener, but it doesn't give you everything that you can honestly expect, especially when you get into the bounce and charmful, wonderful chocolate that had me by the balls with obsession with these clean guitars and hooks. They really knew how to craft songs that had some rough around the edges kind of feels, but also coming in with some very glossy finishes like with Hard Out that is such a polished mix and then from the fandom from the track Girls. We see more interludes that serve best as great song and show openers like The Encounter and 12 that hypnotize the audience in with these swirling electric bliss. This band just gave listeners a feel of pop and rock that made us feel like we had the cutting edge of styles that are inspired not just by punk music but jazz music as well. The tattoos, the black attire, the long Long, slicked black hair. Maddie became an idol in the manner of 50 minutes. But much of the credit really is due all across the board evenly to the band as Adam, George, and Ross really did contribute a lot to the band's future. But there is by far no question that Maddie Healy is what gives people that rush of emotional sensation. The man is an ultra treasure on this record, delivering countless S-tier performances that are worth checking out more than once. The charisma, the personality, the passion, so much is displayed vocally that makes Maddie such a favorite in pop music. Women wanna be with him, men want to be him. The man is a literal sex icon. I can remark numerous times where I am screaming these lyrics so loud in my car that I cannot feel like I am equally as obsessed as the typical 1975 fangirl. Especially seeing all the success that the band has endured within these 10 years, it's no wonder why we've seen so much potential just from this debut. Dominating charts with so many breakout hits, even on records that in my opinion are kind of mediocre. I feel like my experience with this band is just so sentimental and so special. I really feel like this was the first live performance I've been to where I can hardly hear the music because the screams are so powerful. The obsession is so wildly emphasized, but can you really blame the audience? This band is just so addictive, so infectious, just so amazing. The 1975 subtitled will always be one of the most listened records from me of all time, one of my most cherished records of my teenage years, and without a doubt, one of the OGs. As always guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, go to like, share, and comment down below. Uh, what did you think of the subtitle from the 1975? Do you think it still carries the same amount of quality as it did 10 years later? Let me know down in the comments down below. Do not forget to check out the description below for more videos and also the links on my social media accounts so you can keep me on the daily. And I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Doses.